there everyone i thought i could do this next part faster um than the videos we've been watching so let's just do this so far we've learned of mendelian genetics i want to teach you a little bit about non mendelian genetics so non mendelian genetics is when we don't work with normal rules of dominance so for example we can have incomplete dominance <clears throat> when there is still a dominant gene and a recessive gene but you don't get complete dominance. When we did our crosses before, we would expect heterozygotes like this to be the dominant form. So that we would expect this to be red. If we, if we cross this in a Punnett square, we would expect all of the offspring to be heterozygotes, and we would expect them all to be red. But that's not the case this time. This time, we get an intermediate. And that is because the dominant gene here does not completely mask the recessive. It is partial. And so this is an exception to Mendel's rules, and here are its consequences. Before, we would have said that all three of these are red, and only this one was white. And we would have had a 3 to 1 ratio in phenotypes. But now, the heterozygotes here get their own phenotype, which is pink. And so the genotype and phenotype ratios will now be the same because the heterozygotes get their own phenotype. So they are the same there. And so in that example, we still had a dominant and a recessive allele. It's just the dominant wasn't completely dominant, so we got a mix. But what if both alleles are equally dominant, as is the case in this horse hair color. To represent horse hair, we have the letter H, but notice there is no lowercase h. If there was a lowercase h, for example, for this dark horse, you might be tempted to say that white is dominant to brown. But in fact, they are both equally dominant, as you can see here if you zoom in on the hair color of this horse. So in this, you have hair that is white and you have hair that is brown. There is not a mix like an incomplete dominance. Instead, there is one um, or both, or sorry, not one or both, there is just both. <clears throat> to represent the allele or version of this gene, we use a superscript instead of capitalizing or lowercase. So for the white, we obviously use W, and for the brown, we use B. This creates a unique heterozygote. If we were to cross two of these, if we took two of these guys right here and we crossed them, this would be our results. In this case, in this uh, monohybrid cross, we would get the same type of results that we got up here in the incomplete dominance. And that is our genotype and phenotypes being equal in ratios because the heterozygotes get their own special genotype. Whereas before, all three of these would have been one genotype, or sorry, phenotype. Now, the heterozygotes get their own phenotype, which is Rhone. Rhone means mix. Um, this, this right here is a Rhone horse. Um, so that, um, let me see if I want to go forward with this. Uh, I will talk about multiple alleles. So multiple alleles means there's more than one allele. Sometimes it's not just you have blue eyes or brown eyes. You can have hazel eyes. You can have something else, right? Um, so to represent this, we can use different letters, but in this case, we're using one letter, and that is the letter I to represent blood type. So maybe you've heard this before, that your blood type A or B or your blood type AB, or your blood type O. So let me describe that first, what that means. Here are the phenotypes. So you can be blood type A, which means that on your blood cells, you carry oxygen, but you also have these little tiny sticky uppy things called antigens. Antigens elicit an allergic response in anybody that does not have that antigen in their blood. In other words, if you are not type A or type AB, you cannot accept 
that blood. It would make you um, have a reaction and you could die. And so you need to have the A antigen. If you are type B, you have the B antigen, and that means you can take from people that have the type B. If you are type AB, that means you can take from anybody. You have both antigens, and so you're not allergic to either. Type O contains no antigens, and so you cannot take from anybody but type O. It is the clean blood. So what's interesting here is that type O cannot take from anybody, so cannot receive from anybody. Only O can only receive from O. But O can give to everybody because it cannot elicit an allergic reaction. There is no antigen there to elicit anything. <clears throat> so how does it work genetically? Well, we have these two alleles here that are equally dominant to each other. So these are both dominant. And when they are together, we get this. Both antigens are present in the same way that both hairs were present in the roan horse with this genotype. It's the same gene, so we use superscripts just like we did with the horse hair. And so they are both dominant. However, we are talking about multiple alleles. And so in this case, there is a third allele, and that is the non-antigen allele. And it is recessive to both of these. And so what that means is there are all of these different genotypes here that are possible. Type O can only result from two recessive alleles. Type A can result from these two because the lowercase i is dominated. And type B can result in these uh, two because of this. Then there's the codominant AB, which is here. And so that is multiple alleles. That's three alleles for one gene, and two of them happen to be codominant. Next we have polygenic traits, which are interesting. Polygenic traits create a huge range of variation in traits. And so if we were to look at something like skin color as a trait, as a single trait, it turns out that skin color is controlled by multiple other traits. So it is really not one trait, but we see it as one trait. So for example, here you can see that there's color and there is shade. And so there's actually two genes controlling color and shade. So if we look on the chromosomes here, we see two loci, one here and maybe one here. We'll call this the M gene for melanin. Melanin is a protein that makes your skin a certain color. And we'll actually say that another version of this could be lowercase. And we'll say that there's a third version actually. And I'll draw it um, like this, uh, sideways M. So that could be a multiple allele situation, and maybe it gives a reddish tone. So the melanin creates the color, and then there's actually a second gene on a different loci, and we'll call that L. L can mean lysozyme. Lysozyme is an enzyme that destroys melanin and helps to create a shade, much like how an artist would add white to a dark paint to create a lighter color. And so maybe the lowercase one is less lysozyme for a darker color. Whereas this one is more. And so that creates a huge variation here. So for example, maybe this person has dominant melanin and no lysozyme, so they have the recessive. That creates a huge range of traits. So if you see a huge range of traits, it's not likely to be uh, just multi-allele. It's likely to be polygenic. If we look at that word polygenic, poly means many, like a polygon has many sides. And of course, genic is gene. Uh, we will get to the rest later.